All right, welcome to Puro Kalaro Podcast. Uh, we are, I am again in my English mode because we have very special guest today uh, on the podcast. Um, we have the guys from Quick Fire Labs. We got Tony and Noah. They're working on a game. Guys, welcome to the podcast, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm also joined by... Uh, My co-co-host, Rain, you're here. How are you, man? I am back. Uh, you know, I <laughs> just come in and out, you know, when yeah, I want to. So back, I'm here now. <laughs> All right, guys. I mean, how is it, man? We are in a tough time right now with COVID and everything. So how are you guys? How's it faring in the office? Uh, pretty well. Everybody's mostly working remote, but uh, yeah, it's... It's oddly been, um, you know, beneficial where we can put time in as we need. Um, don't, you know, have to worry about that. We're, we're in California, so we don't have to worry about all that nasty traffic. Um, and, oh, yeah. you know, we can work, work around the clock uh, to get this game uh, out the door, which has been really, really fun. I hear you. I mean, how is the overall mood right now? Any changes that, I mean... I know, I mean, you, you said it's been great and all, but how is the total mood and all that? Because most of the developers right now, some of them have delayed their uh, their <clears throat> launch dates and everything. But how are you guys faring with, with all of this? Uh, you guys on track or something? Yeah, we're, we're largely on track. We're actually going to be going uh, live into early access. Um, Somewhere between August seventh and August eighth on on Steam, and it's awesome. it's been a long yeah long road to get there. But um, you know uh, we've been we've been working around the clock to make it happen, and it's been great. Uh, the game that you know over the last few months has massively transformed. Um, we've put in a lot of core features um, and done tons and tons of balancing. So we're super eager to see uh, player data and to see what you know the, the comments and feedback from uh, the player base is. Because every one of us is a gamer. Um, we spend you know half our time working on the game, um, half our time actually playing other games together, and kind of <laughs> no, no time sleeping. Um, so, so, so yeah. Like we sleep for, especially Noah, he sleeps for a good two, three minutes a day. And yeah, uh, I've been awake for yeah. 40 hours at this point. So I'm rocking it. Yeah. I'm going good. Yeah. We're, we're dedicated. Jesus, that sounds like a different planet, not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, you guys yeah. need to tell me who is Quick Fire Labs? I mean, how you guys started uh, and all that. Well, um, Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting story. Um, so we've actually got half of our team in uh, two different locations. Um, we've got our publishing team in California, and we've got uh, several of our developers up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Canada. And mm. um, what was interesting was uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to these Canadian folks and. See, every year I get hit up. I've been in the game industry more than 20 years. I've been at Sega and Bandai and EA and Wild Tangent and everywhere else you could possibly imagine. Uh, and, you know, it's not that I'm super amazing. It's just that I'm getting old and I've, I've done this for a long time. So I know everybody and I've got a lot of experience. So um, I get hit up every year with tons of different games, ideas and technologies. 99% of them, it's like, No, nope. you know, I just, you know, and I'm maybe I'm a jaded old man at this point. I don't know. But uh, most of them I pass on. Anyway, um, one day I get introduced by a friend of mine, these Canadian guys, and they had a really cool looking title. But what was really interesting is that these guys showed me that they could launch this really cool shooter that was console level quality uh, on the web. And it launched in oh. between seven to 10 seconds. And I uh -huh. stopped and I, and I looked at that and I said, well, it's a really neat, you know, trick. You guys did some editing and, but that, that can't be done. Um, and 
then I, I took a deeper look at that, and sure enough, it happened. So the technology that powered uh, being able to run this on the web mm-hmm. was what initially grabbed me, but then the gameplay itself with the, the time mechanics was really, really cool as well. And I said, you know what? I like how these guys think. I like the tech that they build. Um, and they're a bunch of really smart developers, but they didn't have uh, the game industry uh, knowledge and design expertise. Uh-huh that uh my team had so it was this Mm -hmm. really great kind of marriage between you know a bunch of really seasoned game industry producers designers um and a bunch of really smart developers and technologists up in in canada so uh we we took this prototype that they had created with some really unique technology and we started to transform that into a game that uh players would find really fun and Mm -hmm. Everybody in the company is a gamer. Um, everybody who's working on this project. So we end up, uh, you know, playtesting our own title, but then also, um, like, especially lately, we've been diving into Gunfire Reborn, which is another fantastic title. And uh, then we do, we make sure we do a minimum uh, one night a week that's, you know, specifically a game night. So we'll be playing golf with your friends or, or gunfire or something. Um, and it's, it's just fantastic. We get, you know, kill each other. Everybody accuses Noah of cheating, um, you know, and, <laughs> and we, we have a good old time. But no, the company how this, is... How did this turn to me? What did I do? You were you going cheat. at a good pace, man. All right. You, you, okay, look, the truth is, is Noah's actually really good, but we don't tell him that to keep his ego in check. And... Ah. Okay. And to make the rest of us feel better about losing to him, we accuse him of cheating, which is <laughs> pretty pretty standard uh, game industry tactics to make yourself feel better about yourself. So um, no, so that's that's our studio. Uh, we love working with the Canadian guys. This is our first title. We've got a couple other titles in prototype um, that are very very different. Uh, we want to uh, put up you know games that are wildly fun and addictive, but one of our core values is uh, to work with the community um, and uh, to make sure that our titles are games that gamers really, really love. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, kind of being us. gamers yourself. That's, that's very important feedback and all that. Right. All right. So yeah. let's talk about this game. Right. So who's going to start? All right. Let's talk about this game that we're, that we've been hinting about. All right. So what is chrono shot? Tell us about it, guys. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit, and then um, I'll, I'll hand it over to Noah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, okay. Yeah. Well, no. I, so ne- Noah does a lot of our uh, game balancing and design, mm. um, in, which just makes the game just, you know, makes a night and day difference when it comes to fun and playability. So mm. what is Chrono Shot? Um, Chrono Shot right now is mainly a third-person arena shooter with specialized time mechanics. What's really cool about the specialized time mechanics is time only moves when you move. Um, mm-hmm. So what that does is it allows you to, uh, to pull off really cool Matrix-esque kind of moves where you can you know, shoot in four different directions um, and the bullets you know, are moving really slow. Um, you can mm. switch weapons, you can use special abilities. Um, and then when you start moving again, all those bullets and, and everything just zip at full speed. So, uh, you know, you can have guys attacking you from four directions. And you can take them all out and do a backflip out of that situation. Fun kind of power fantasy moments um, mm-hmm. throughout the game. You get better rewards for the cooler um, and more complex uh, things that you pull off in the game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's mainly a shooter. Um, but... Uh, Noah, go ahead and and, uh, and talk a little bit about you know your perspective on the title. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, if you get played a game called Super Hot, um, it kind of does a lot of the similar mechanics that time moves when you move, but this is uh-huh. uh, a lot different. It's not a VR; it is a third person shooter. Uh, you know, movement is more controlled if you're used to just a general shooter, and mm-hmm. it's more uh, like arcadey. It's not a puzzle solver. And mm-hmm. uh, like right now, it's kind of in its simplest form, I would say, uh, especially because when we're treating it as early access, we're really treating it as early access, right? Alpha, there's there's yeah. no money, there's no cash shop. This is just purely just getting user feedback on just general game feel on the basic mm-hmm. level of 
just movement enemies and uh basic map textures right just like blocks and stuff yeah. but uh you know we're of course wanting to develop it way more and uh you know mm-hmm. get a lot more going but we're wanting to see how players react to kind of a basic interaction uh it's just kind of fun to mess around with it because it's, it's that thing where and i i find in most bullet time games it's kind of exciting to just sit down for a second and be like oh whoa the world's slow down and you interact with it mm-hmm. um and so I, I hope players kind of have that reaction uh just going in to be like oh whoa what do we do the end the the hope is we get to make it just kind of extreme and crazy with both mm-hmm. you know level uh level and map design and even uh you know some uh, enemy design and even uh the t- uh, talent system and multiplayer. We're we're really uh, trying to get to that point where this game really expands mm. on itself. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a really interesting concept. I mean, as far as I've seen it, it's already uh, there. Showing, uh, show you guys show, showed it all to the world in Steam, right? So, I mean, it's a really interesting concept that would. I mean. For me, I'm an old gamer. I mean, I'm just like you guys. I mean, this is bringing me back to the time when uh, Max Payne released. Yeah, this is yeah. yeah. I mean, right? I mean, this is this is the kind of technology that uh, you would have guessed that from the time of Max Payne, which is like early 2000s and all that. Um, we would have had these type of games, but this is just calling back to that and improving on that uh, particular technology, but. I mean, where, what is the inspiration behind these game? Other than you know, um, you've already said Matrix and everything, uh, but w- what made you think that this uh, right now in the what do you call this? The dawn of first person shooters and third person shooters and everything. I mean, what made you think that this is the right way to go? Meaning, this kind sure. of time stop and all, everything like that. So, well, what's <clears throat> What's really interesting is uh, when we first saw this, because the the first prototype with the with the time mechanics was shown to us by the uh-huh. developers. They they put that together, and um, w- some of the feedback that we got from doing uh, play testing with college students and some other folks. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Sorry. <clears throat> don't die on me, Tony. Yeah, I, I know. I know I, you're middle just, aged, but don't die yet. <laughs> Yeah, I'll try and survive to the end of the podcast if I can. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what happens, you know. Uh, so, no, uh, one of the things that we found that was really interesting is that uh, the kind of audience that this opens up to. Um, I love first-person shooters. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've I've been a I'm an old-school Counter-Strike addict, and uh-huh. uh, and you know, but in my old age now, I'm I'm more of a a strategic camper than I am uh, a good Twitch player, <laughs> you know. But um, anyway, that being said, yeah, so many people just went, "I hate that guy" instantly because I said that. Uh, but <laughs> now, uh, what we found is that people who uh, are, you know, not necessarily that good at the fast-paced shooters, really uh-huh. found that they they could get into this game in a whole different way because mm-hmm. it makes it way more strategic. And it opens this up, this game type up to a much larger audience. And we had ladies, uh, and that was one of the interesting things. We actually indexed really well with uh, the the female demographic, um, mm-hmm. uh, because it. And I, I think part of that was probably because uh, suddenly this game uh, makes it's a little bit more cerebral. You have to start planning and thinking ahead, and it gives you mm-hmm. the time to do that. And I can tell you with, with my daughters and my wife, they're way better at sitting, strategizing, and thinking three steps ahead of where uh, I am, right? <laughs> so when they started playing it, they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. I've got, you know, 12 guys running at me. I've got the first four I'm, I'm taking out right now, and, and I've got plans for the rest of them all coming. And, uh, and but what, what you find is that people who aren't really that great um, at uh, first person or third person shooters mm. um, can really enjoy this game because it, it just weaves in that element of tactics. And the other mm. things that we added in um, are specialized ammunition that can do uh, different things. Like there's one called Black Hole 
that if you shoot a group, uh, it expands out and then sucks in and it just pulls everything in and it explodes, which is really fun. Um, there's another one called teleport that if you've got a group of guys chasing you, you can turn around and shoot the teleport bullet at them. And when it hits them, you instantly teleport to where they're at and everything around them explodes. And it gives you this really cool power fantasy kind of moments like, Oh, that just felt good. Um, so part of yeah, part of the inspiration was there uh, in you know going with time mechanics like that is making it accessible and making it more strategic, um, mm-hmm. so that everybody feels like hey I can participate and and have a lot of fun here, um, and so it does well with people like uh, you know us who are more used to you know competitive shooters, but then it opens it up to a whole different group of folks who um, who aren't. Uh, so great in that area and still gives them the ability to have fun and feel good about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm already, I'm already, I mean, as I see it, I'm already uh, getting the vibe of, of how uh, timely the enemies move and how the bullets move towards the enemies. It's kind of like, you know, that scene in, in X-Men uh, yes, yes. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that Quicksilver yeah, scene. Yeah, no, I mean, you can, right on you could actually play the entire music what was that music anyway i mean like oh no, that, dude that was that was, know, that was that was that was queen which by the way um because i'm old uh and, and i grew up with queen uh i i would give a body part if i could have a queen sound part any of the queens uh, of queen's titles in our game but that's neither here <laughs> nor there i, I would try to get it. a license man <laughs> oh yeah it's as a matter of fact if somebody like gave us like you know 50 million dollars and said here do whatever you want <laughs> the first minute i'd be like license don't stop me now from queen and put it in it's exactly what it, i did it could have been the best world premiere ever you show that and you <laughs> show your gameplay oh, yeah. that oh my god <laughs> Yeah. Well, and, and you know what the funny thing is you can actually catch bullets in the time slot to refill it goes into your your gun it sucks yeah. in it you grab the bullet out of the air and you throw it into your gun and so that me. is so oh yeah that's C- actually catching mechanic. bullets is wild so that's yeah, how that's... you a uh, way to defend yourself because since your movement as a, a player is slower you actually have to use the time slow because there will be like drones or guys with smgs or a shotgun yeah. flying enemy shooting at you and there's no way you're going to dodge like 10 pellets so you uh-huh. can catch all of them and then refill your sniper rifle really quickly. And so, uh, yeah, that's actually a mechanic uh, that you can utilize. Finally, a yeah. game that turns the tides, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to finally beat those stinking AI, man. It just took us, you know, 30 years. But the, the, the reason I didn't do a Max Payne reference, because I actually knew exactly. I was thinking Max Payne, but I'm like, dude, yeah. most people haven't played Max Payne in like 15 years i know oh, right I was like, super hot I, I, I said super hot you know i was like i know this game but i was like oh so he yeah. knows max Payne. there we go yeah that was the game i was I actually really up. yeah i was really happy that you said that because i'm like oh max Payne. yeah <laughs> and just like such good memories Th- uh, three three was really good i think that was the- no you know mm. what i'm gonna say something sad the only Max Pen I haven't played haven't played is three. It's three. It's three. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I mean, I've Th- played three, one three and two and all that. Three is good. Yeah. <laughs> three is good. You you'd recommend it? Yeah, no, I think I played <laughs> three and then went back to two and one. I started with in the PS3, I think. It's, okay. Well, it has better graphics, so the makes it a better Pen game, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, one, I mean, I, one part I there, started like the roof. I mean, I started with, with, with like Max Payne 1. I mean, I can still remember my friends having trouble opening the, I mean, playing the game because they're getting black screens. And now, have you open, have you activated OpenGL? I mean, <laughs> right now, that's not <laughs> even a problem, man. Right. Yeah. Before, before we didn't have graphic cards. We just have, you have a computer, just play the game, see if you can play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was always the land party dream, right? You just have a land party, and it's just like, all right, two computers aren't working. All right, you guys have to sit down and wait. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Those were the days. All right, so I mean, we've talked about the nearest uh, comparison to this game. I mean, because gamers are always like that, right? They always, oh, it's like that. Oh, it's like this. Uh, before they actually try out the game, 
um, because they want to yeah. feel a sense of like uh, familiarism. Because I mean, automatically, if you see a new gameplay, a new mechanic that you're afraid, no, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, I don't think that's a good game. But if they actually some t- uh, somehow familiarize with it, they're in a safe side. Uh, as you might, I mean, you could say that they're they feel safe when they can. Uh, relate to it uh but this you guys are calling out several different references here uh what makes this um it is very early right now to say but what makes it different do you think along the line you got your own uh what it calls roadmap for this but what do you think makes it this one different from all the other things i mean ubisoft just released some ro- <laughs> i mean battle royale like, out of nowhere um so what makes this different from uh the rest because obviously you guys are being going to be canned uh into um a single a uh, corner there where uh most of the gainers can get familiar with you so what makes this different well i i think uh <clears throat> a few things are off the top of my head uh-huh. um the time mechanics for sure um are are pretty unique um definitely yeah won't... definitely yeah, and and the way that we've implemented them um, is mm-hmm. is very very unique. Uh, right. So we think it's it's going to be you know really accessible, really fun, mm-hmm. um, that a lot of different people can play. But um, another big differentiator is how we conduct our studio and our operations mm-hmm. um, because we're gamers. Uh, we're going to yeah. be laser focused on a few different things. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those is player behavior actually mm-hmm. taking a look at what people are doing in the game looking at their mechanics and being able or looking at their data and what they're doing and and pivoting and modifying our gameplay our mechanics based on that but uh-huh. not not just taking a look at what people are doing but listening to the community seeing what uh people are really saying um and that's that's one of the things that uh you know you don't see from a lot of of developers, unfortunately, these days is, yeah. you know, um, and uh, believe me, I've worked at a lot of major publishers and you get your roadmap, you get, uh, you know, your timelines and you're forced to just shove this game out and, and, you know, and here's mm. the parameters. And then it doesn't matter to a lot of folks, you know, what the players are saying or what reviews it gets. So we're taking the opposite approach of that and really saying, we want to hear from the community. We want to hear from, uh, everybody who you know is invested in this game, and make our modifications based uh, on that as well. You know, really taking the community. So um, we we think that that's really the only way to build a long lasting, really fun game. Um, because at the end of the day, we wish a lot of our favorite titles would have listened to us, right? So we want to yeah. do that uh, for everyone else. So. It's one of the things we think is going to make our studio unique and also make our game uh, better than the rest is our community involvement. Plus, we're just going to do some really cool, fun stuff like bullet catching that doesn't really exist anywhere else. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to throw some really cool mobs in, um, you know, and we can do anything. And that's one thing I would encourage anybody who's listening to this who wants to play the game is you know, give us your feedback, talk to us. We want to hear it. Um, because there's nothing that we can't do with this title, right? Um, you know, I was just joking around the other day that, uh, you know, we've got some flying drone units and I, I was just messing with our, our design team and said, how about you turn them in? You know, when, how about we just do an animation for fun that when you blow those up, it just you know, explodes into little tiny kittens that go flying everywhere, you know, just for the hell of it. <laughs> you know, like, and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just give it a whirl. Uh, you know, and then guys like Noah are like, don't listen to Tony. Just, you know, he's yeah, a studio. I don't editor. approve of it because <laughs> I'm interacting with engineers every morning, right? And I'm just like, okay, yeah. these are our tasks. All right, we're bug fixing these issues, blah, blah, blah. And then Tony drops in the calls like, guys, kittens. And I'm like, oh my God. Exploding exploding kittens, trust me. And you can't like, go oh, wrong with that. I, I, have to yeah. look at our, I, I look at our task system. I'm like, how, how do I turn this into this, right? Like, so, like, Lordy. Yeah. Hey, as soon as if you guys don't do it, the mod community is gonna do it. 
<laughs> yeah, right on. Yeah. That's actually, and that's something that we've been talking about too. Is is opening up tools in the future for the mod community because we want people playing around. We want people building maps. We want, Hell you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, why not? Uh, Hell so, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're totally down for that. Quicksilver mod, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, we have we, I, yeah, we have to have. Uh, like we're, I was watching Rick and Morty the other day, and um, oh God, I love Rick and Morty. But um, there, it's the it's the Inception dream episode, and as they're running, you know, from oh, yeah. the Freddy, the Freddy Krueger, they go, "Look, it's a legally, uh, it's a legally safe knockoff of an '80s, you know, horror guy with uh, swords on his fingers instead of knives." And I just, uh-huh. so I'm like, so if you make a Quicksilver mod, uh, make sure it's a legally safe knockoff. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Just, That's the word. I mean, you guys can't yeah. do it, but the mod community, you can always trust the mod community. To do it. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah, right. I, I, I'm a big believer of mod stuff. I've always, you know, whenever I've talked to Tony about any project I've worked on with him, I'm like, Dude, can we make mod support a thing? Because, you know, it, it is always a big task to do that. And, uh-huh. like, what tools you give them. And yeah. uh, also, like, make sure it doesn't destroy the game. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. uh, you know, the, even the server requirements, because sometimes you want to host it for them as well. Like, hey, you know, you can put it up, but we're allowing users to stay there um, mm-hmm. as well. But uh, that's something I do want for this and even future titles is I, I really love modding community. Like, some of my favorite games of all time have come from mods, right? Like, if you've played Source games, like, you know, Counter-Strike or even... You know, uh-huh. Dota from Warcraft 3 and even Starcraft 1. I love, uh, you know, and Brood War, right? And all those games, like the modding community were awesome. Like, uh-huh. like awesome. Like they really defined a lot of the games we even play today, but even just like part of our childhoods because we played these games that were really fun. But what kept us playing, like the thing making me play Brood War and Warcraft 3 for the like next 10 years after this game had already come out uh-huh. were the mods. Like the, exactly. those, I'm a, I'm a big believer in mods. I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone, every uh, player out there, particularly, of course, PC players, are still playing Skyrim at this point. Modern that part. disappoints me. That disappoints me. <laughs> Skyrim yeah. cannot be played. Dude, Bethes- <laughs> Dude, I, you know, I can't say too much, but I don't like Bethesda. I'll just say that, you know. Hey. Tony, you might have some different beliefs than me because I know I, you play Bethesda I, titles. I do not I, like Bethesda. Yeah, no, no, it's more of a... A high skill kind of a player. Um, I, where, I like I like casual games. Don't act like I don't yeah, play I'm, games that are not high skill. Like, hey, 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 hey. Well, but but anyway, yeah. I I I loved Skyrim. Um, then again, I I played it with uh, with my kids. So you know, um, yeah. So that makes it, it all was, better. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, they'd be like, Dad, Dad. Hey, how do we how do we mod this? <laughs> That's that's really what it came down to, was they just they they just wanted help modding stuff. So I'm like, fine, okay, and then uh, yeah. So so yeah, we definitely want to have uh, modding support. Um, we haven't, you know, but that's one of those things that we'll get to when we get to it. Um, yeah. And uh, but it's it's on our minds. The things that we've got uh, in development now. Um, as we go into early access, you know, we're getting all that data and we're getting a lot of the core mechanics, uh, you know, mm-hmm. polished and doing all that stuff. But um, multiplayer's uh, one of our next really, uh, you know, big releases, and we're uh, right in the midst of uh, design and development there. So we think that that's really going to be that kind of uh, forever experience where you know in in your single player stuff that's it's fantastic you get the power fantasy it's really fun um and then in multiplayer you get to use those skills that you've just built up and you get to go uh you know experience it cooperatively with your friends and you know have that kind of wonderful experience so yeah. um, that's we'll what we'll get to that coming. we'll get to that because i have a good question about that because i it's already boggling my mind but what is do you think uh the target market because i can't see uh this being looked at by uh like shooter fans but also mm-hmm. because of the uh, strategical uh 
uh, uh, aspect to it. Um, it can be looked at as a strategy game hiding uh, in the face of a shooter. So yeah. what do you think? What do you think is, uh, I mean, are you uh, targeting a wide rate, a wide array of audience here, or are you targeting mostly or captivating the, the attention of, of shooter fans? Well, um, I can tell you what we're starting with and, uh, -huh. uh it, uh, you know, we're, there's what we're going to start with, what we suspect, and then, mm -hmm. uh, how we're going to pivot based on what we actually see. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we're starting with is as we fir bring our first cohorts of players in, mm -hmm. um, we are going to be targeting, um, some shooter fans of mm -hmm. different types and seeing how, you know, how they react, how they like it. Uh -huh. um, but then we're gonna we're gonna expand that out. But we we think shooter fans you know, are gonna give us some really good data up front, um, uh -huh. and then we're gonna just you know see how other other groups do and yeah. fans of other of the genres, especially strategy uh, strategy players. And um, we're not sure at, at the end of the day because as you were asking earlier, what's unique about this title? Um, there's very few shooters that have that that kind of uh, strategy you know, built in. And as you said, yeah. it, there is some people may consider it a strategy game with the mask of a shooter. Um, yeah. so we're, we're going to have to see how well, uh, the different, uh, demographics react. And, uh, we, we like that it's very accessible to a large group, mm -hmm. but you can't, you can't build a title for everybody for ev all the time. Right. That's just yeah. not, there's no, there's no game. That's the forever game for everybody. So. Um, you know, uh, we're going to have to see how folks react and pivot based upon that. Um, so we're not sure, I guess, is the answer, but but we're ready to find out. Wow. Very exciting. I mean, I'm already seeing some blow up <laughs> from the strategy, guys, because it's very it's it, it's looking like a, a very strategical shooter. Um, you don't even need to be a good aimer at this game, I think. Uh, you just have to predict yeah. where uh, the enemies are going, what's the next move, what's the best next move after that, and all that. So that's what I'm thinking. But let's get to it, all right? How yeah. is... This is a good... This is actually a good practice game for now, as it's right now built. It's a good practice game for uh, for predictability of shooting and all that, because uh, first-person shooters are at a point where... Um, people are not just aiming where the enemy is at, but where the enemy is going going next because of um, yeah. different hurts and monitors and all that. So they're they're already calculating beforehand. But how is multiplayer going to work in this game? I'm very curious about that. Actually, yeah, that's the same question. How how would the 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 time mechanic work on a multi a multiplayer? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's we get we get that question a lot. Um, so there's two different things uh, I, I can talk about real quick. I'll get okay. to the multiplayer second. Um, uh, there's a couple of mechanics in the game though that uh, you know that we've put in that are not apparent uh, until you actually start getting deeper into the gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got uh, some really interesting AI built in that we're mm -hmm. also um, you know, really going to be polishing in the in the near term. So mm -hmm. uh, the AI starts to shoot where it predicts you're going to be. So when mm -hmm. you're trying to use the time mechanic um, and you're catching bullets, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the reason we don't want people to just, you know, forever be able to farm bullets out of the air and mm -hmm. always be able to dodge because the time mechanic. So what happens is, is that the AI, you know, will you'll have multiple spawns pop up and guys shooting at you and they're not only shooting where you're at, but where, where a percentage of the bullets are going to go where it thinks you're going to be. Um, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. There's other stuff that happens. Like, um, if you start shooting, doing so many headshots, the AI will start to, uh, develop shields in that area. So you have to change Whoa. your strategy. Oh. Yeah. So, so it, it, you can't just, you know, I'm going to do all headshots and just, you know, uh, so yeah. you may you may have to start doing leg shots, body shots, all, all different kinds your, of things. Or swap your gun. Uh, let's yeah, say, or change your a, gun. A good example right. of this is the shield guys, the, the shields take a number of hits. 
So if you use uh-huh. the shotgun, which shoots like 10 pellets, it'll do those 10 hits required to break a shield. So one shot from the shotgun will shatter that shield for you. So you can swap mm-hmm. back to the other gun in the time slot. Like, um, yeah. that's a basic concept of it. Um, but yeah, it, yeah. There, there adds more, especially if there's a lot of enemies that have shields coming at you. So, um, yeah. yeah. So th- there's some really neat, yeah, really neat stuff. And Noah's thought through a lot of these things and, and put some really, uh, really cool designs in place. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as you were talking about trying to predict where the enemies are going to be running. So uh, uh-huh. the, the AI really changes things up and makes it even more fun. Um, so the question of multiplayer, um, that has actually been our biggest challenge. Um, uh-huh. And we, we want to make something that's really, really fun. Um, so what we've just what we're we've done is we've developed the underlying technology to support multiple different instances of uh, multiplayer. And uh-huh. uh, we're prototyping um, several different possibilities right now. Um, so if just think of it as a matrix of, you know, possible different ways we could build it in with time mechanics. Uh-huh. Um, in any multiplayer, you've got synchronous, you've got asynchronous, you know, you could have instance time mechanics, you could have global time mechanics. There's mm-hmm. all different ways. So what we've done is we've put together the tech to support it. And now we're prototyping out um, a few different uh, ways that we've narrowed down and we're play testing those. Um, and then, then we're going to roll it out. So I can't give you the specifics because uh, we've got multiple scenarios of how we, we think um, time mechanics and multiplayer will, will work, but we're testing them all. Um, Jesus. Yeah. So it, <laughs> development exactly, is not yeah. easy. People, the people, no, no. Uh, if you want to get into the game industry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let me just exactly. like you know drop that one right there. Uh, yeah, the people, amount of that, that, testing QA is just crazy. Uh, yeah, even for the most you know, thing. And most people, you know, the thing that just drives me up a wall because I've been in the game industry a long time. I've done a lot of cool stuff. And what I really, really hate the most is, especially you know, get to a, go to a family gathering and stuff. People who don't really know what a, you you know I do or you know what you might do in the game industry. They're like, oh yeah. So uh, you play video games every day, is that it? You know, and <laughs> you just you just want to punch exactly them right in the like face. That. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like that's that. and that's how they all sound too, which is amazing. They all they all start to sound like this, you know, and you're like, oh, that just <laughs> asshole kind of uh, uh, vibe, and and they don't realize that you know, it's ninety plus percent of our work is is just tough, hard work of planning, developing, um, doing it again and again. And I used to run, uh, early in my career, I used to run testing organizations in the game industry. Uh-huh. And I had really big groups. Um, and I remember uh, I had usually five or six different studios that my testing organization was supporting at any given time. Uh-huh. And I had to switch my testing teams from title to title to title, each individual team, uh-huh. because they couldn't take so much more golf. You know, like... like <laughs> They're like, God, I never want to play a golf game again because um, it stops being fun when you're just, you know, playing the same damn thing a thousand times, uh, finding, you know, the smallest bug, writing it up, submitting it, retesting. So there's so much work that goes into game development. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it's a, so it has to be a passion for you. And that's one of the yeah. things why uh, everybody on our team, we're all gamers. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. Um, and uh, one last piece uh, I'll say on that is, um, you know, having run publishing at, at companies, you know, like, like Sega and, and others, and especially living where I do, I would inherit a lot of these guys that are supposed to like, oh, this guy's out of college and he knows somebody who got him a job here. And now mm-hmm. guess what? He works for you. And they wouldn't, a lot of times they are not gamers. They've got an MBA from Stanford or something. I'm like, I really mm-hmm. don't care. You know, I really don't care. I don't even want them on my team. Um, but I'd have to deal with them anyway, because that's just how big companies are. But, uh, you know, I want gamers uh, because you can't build a great product unless you have a passion for it. And unless mm-hmm. you can understand uh, what the end user um, experience is and, and, and why they would want it. Um, it's the same thing when I've had guys apply to work with me in the past. And I'm like, look, 
what's the last game you've played? And they're like, Duck Hunt on Nintendo. And I'm like, get get the hell out of my office. And it's it to is, me, it's it is a classic. It, yeah, it is a classic. But if if it's the last game that they played, <laughs> you know, I'm like. You're giving, oh me flash, you're giving me nightmares of my first job in the game industry, Tony. It's uh, yeah. the, my, uh, one of my direct yeah. supervisors who was the director of game design at the time. The last game he mentioned he was like actively played was Street Fighter 2. And I was like, what man. a classic game. But and I was like, you're the director game. of game design. Well, so, <laughs> Street Fighter 2 got me through high school. Uh, that much I'll say. Um, you know, good, good for you, man. Yeah. But you play shooters? Yeah, that could. You know, yeah, <laughs> it is technically a shooter. That is correct. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, um, yeah, we but we love we love what we do, and it's uh, just needless to say, it's it's not always fun, but it's a passion of ours. And I'll just end that that section by saying, um, you know, when when you get folks in that just you know are there for money or just you know want to have a job on you know but don't love games i'm like really if you worked for ferrari but you rode a bike to work do you think mm-hmm. that anybody would respect you no mm-hmm. you know <laughs> so Say ciao, the, just the bike like was that. also ferrari a ferrari bike. yeah <laughs> yeah okay a ferrari bike and that would be <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> well i mean all right so uh i you guys mentioned a game mechanic that's already revealing to me that you guys are creating an X-Men game. I mean, <laughs> you guys <laughs> said, I mean, I mean, Noah just said that the AI adapts to you wherever, wherever you shoot it, right? So um, you, does it develop shield also in, in the chess area if you shoot uh, most? Because most of the <laughs> people who's going to play with shooters are going to uh, shoot at the chess area versus the expert yeah. that shoots on the head. You guys just defined a sentinel right there. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. know, right? Yeah, but uh, yeah. to kind of expand on that, it's um, it's not like when you're shooting at the enemy, right? Like, none of the enemies are strong enough HP-wise uh-huh. right now to okay. do it midway, but it's as the map gets further along, more powerful enemies spawn, different variants of them spawn, right? It's like as the sentinels, right? Season two, now they have special power. It's like, oh, I block telekinesis from you, Jean Grey. It's like, what the heck? How did this happen? How can they block that? And Magneto, you can't move yeah. us. It's like, it's just whatever. But it, it's further along because uh, the game as it functions now, uh, when, when people go to play it, is a timed mode. It's seven minute sessions uh-huh. uh, per match. And as the farther you get along, the, the more powerful, the more enemies and the uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> a little bit more complex. Of course, we're really wanting to expand on enemy types and AI interactions as uh-huh. a whole. Uh, that's like a, a big thing. It, it's really hard to do that. Like to kind of ex- expand on something's how difficult some of these things. Like just for one of our basic levels, and a lot of these levels are very basic. But mm-hmm. when we were making one out, we had a basic concept built out, and I, I just sat down with one of the engineers who's uh, the level maker, and mm-hmm. he and I we just kept doing iterations and tests just every day, eight hours mm-hmm. a day, just going over and over and over, retesting things, moving things, uh, timed how long it took certain enemies to get to you where the enemy spawners were, you know, all of that, uh, the flow of it, uh, how long in the match it was, how uh-huh. many how many times people are killing things, you know, combo-wise. And, you uh-huh. know, just for that one map alone, it took weeks of just testing every day to, like, get something that we were somewhat happy with, right? Uh-huh. Um, and so that's kind of one of the, the things about that, where, like, we try and be careful and make sure that it's like, is this fun? Does this feel right? Um, uh-huh. Like, is this satisfying? Uh, just even on a, a basic level, like, cause we want to expand and do crazy stuff, but we just want to make sure that we have our core fundamentals correct uh-huh. uh, before we get even, you know, crazier with stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So we're trying to just do it one step at a time. I, I mean, I, this game, as we as we're speaking here, I mean, this game is evolving in my head like crazy. So, I mean, we'd, we've gone through Max Payne, we've gone through several <laughs> games and all that. Now, are you guys creating the Dark Souls of, ga- of shooters? No. I mean, no. <laughs> no. Don't, I know exactly what you did Dark there, but don't, don't even, don't even. Oh, Tony. <laughs> I'm just, I'm offended. No, wait. 
you, you know, and I, I think I think you just touched a uh, a spot, uh, you know, a deep spot there within Noah when you mentioned a title <laughs> from Bandai Namco. Yeah, because um, I, I used to work yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, we both well, we both used to wor- work there, and yeah. uh, and I will say I love the guys over at Bandai. I risk my uh, case. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I did not. I did not work on Dark Souls, by the way. Okay. People that are listening, I did not work on it. I do like the Dark Souls games. I've played them; they're fun. It's just you know, it's very different reasons. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's. I mean, as a single player, even it's already very complex. That it's you know you I th- I mean I don't want to say anything in advance or speak too early here but it's like it's like you've already got that that itch you know that Sid Meier's thing that all right just one more round I think they got me there or some I mean it it gets you hooked yeah. because of um you could have done something better and that um plus right now it's on a it's it's on a like high score thing right. The build is right now on a yeah. on a on a high score thing, and it's like you know what you could you're on that mindset that you know what you know what I I could have done something better there. Let me do it again. So I mean, you guys are yeah. on the right track here when uh, touching on people's addiction, if I might say. <laughs> yeah, so. and yeah, you're you're totally right about that. We actually modified some of the original gameplay. Um, originally it was survival is that you could die and then you had to restart the round. And one of the things that we found was Uh changing it to a timed experience, um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, seems right now to really, uh, make the gameplay even more fun where we don't penalize the player for dying. Um, Mm -hmm. in, in that, I mean, there is a penalty with your score and you, you have to respawn. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not like gameplay's over because you just got shot, uh, you know, one too many times. Um, uh-huh. it was, it was a little too punishing. Now what we are doing, cause that, that's, a, and that, that's where higher skill comes in. One of the things that uh-huh. we are intending on doing is making that game mode available and seeing how, you know, the more experienced players may enjoy doing that as well. So with both, you know, a timed mode and a survival mode. so. Uh, we're putting those, you know, the survival mode is going to be coming out in early access as well um, mm-hmm. and seeing how folks like that. But you're totally right. One of the things that made me super happy the other day is I had one of my kids playing the the game um, and he'd, he'd only played the super early version and he sat down and he's like, oh, oh, I only got I only got two stars on this map. I want the third. And it, like an hour later, I'm like, dude, we we have to leave. And he's like, no, no, no. Just give me one more play. And I said, <laughs> "Yeah, I said that made me really happy to hear." But uh-huh. dude, shut it down. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> what have I just done to so many other parents out there? Where they're gonna be like, "Ah, just give me one more play." And, and <laughs> I know. So I'm like, "Yeah," but that's that's what I want uh, to have happen. So it was really good to see it, but also made me late. So it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's I create the- my own problems. <laughs> that's yeah. actually the first thing um that i actually look in a game personally i mean if you have a a good enough challenge uh that you would hook me back into the game even though i'm i mean by the time you die it was all right i'm done i'm done but it hooks you like a few seconds early you know know what let me just try one more thing uh see if this works and i mean and that is a dangerous, like you said, dangerous to the people yeah. around you because once you introduce him to it, <laughs> what have you done to me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's why I don't give out my home address so that people can't show up. Be like, that's it. <laughs> just, and I, I got to actually, I got to tell you, uh, a very good friend of mine um, uh-huh. uh, uh, in the game industry, Alan Pavlish. Um, uh-huh. He uh, was one of the, he was the the. Uh, main developer on a very old game called wasteland and Uh i played i played wasteland oh yeah i love that game to death um and i spent it took me an entire year to beat it with my best friend in the and i think it was in the late 80s anyway Uh we played this game to death and spent so much time on it years later i'm in a business meeting i think it was at uh e3 or gdc Uh i forget which 
And he ends up sitting next to me in a meeting. It's the first time I met him. And they introduce him as Alan Pavlish. And I turn around and I just grab this guy by the jacket and I start shaking it going, dude, give me back the year of my life <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that I spent on I'm just beating this game. But he's like, who are you? And when I said, I'm an addict of Wasteland, he just sat back and smiled. He was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Oh. So, and, and, uh, and to give you a yeah. visual sense, Tony, even though he, he's he's a shorter but stockier guy, but he's he's a blacksmith and also a martial artist, so he's like got a really strong grip. Like he he, yeah. he will mess up people. Like he'll actually like he's like very strong. Like that's the thing. So when he's saying he grabbed this guy by the collar, the guy's probably flying around the room. Like that's the thing. <laughs> so, like, like to kind of you know give a better sense of it. Yeah, he must so, have gone and, like. Oh, 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 you mean that? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, yeah, that's exactly right. Because he, he was like, why are you shaking me? And I just yelled, wasteland. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 I get it now. That happens. So, yeah, a- Alan's, if, if any, you know, hopefully Alan hears this, but he is one of the best guys in the game industry. It's fantastic. And um, I learned a lot of really great stuff from him. So, uh, Alan, I hope you're listening out there somewhere on your boat. So <laughs> paid for by uh, wasteland. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, uh, we've talked about, uh, this game, uh, that's got me very excited already. Um, but what, um, other than the, the one that you, you've already told us, what other features, uh, we might expect that you guys just have, lying like talking around see if you can uh make it happen what other features can we expect in this game um well i mean i just you know in the in our roadmap coming up like i said uh uh, you know there's there's uh survival mode there's multiplayer um we are going to be adding a cash shop uh with uh some interesting items in the next couple of months um, we're going to have skins. Um, there's a, an entire, uh, you know, system of upgrades for um, both player uh, weapons and uh, some of the special quick. items. Yeah, we're, we're actually going to change the probably going to change the name away from quick bullet to, uh, you know, for the special, you know, ammunition to, uh-huh. to something a little more fun. But uh, yeah, well, we, we have a lot but, of ideas. Yeah. Like, uh, we want to create like, player loadouts if they want to do that maybe classes or metagames like that's the thing like and it it might a lot of these systems outside of the game that link to gameplay Uh eventually like will probably be linked to multiplayer and that's where Mm -hmm. the thing is that a lot of the prototypes we're testing for multiplayer at this point kind of will help define other features because it's like oh well if we do this idea for multiplayer and build it out this way then we can add this this and this and interacts Mm -hmm. in this way right and so um that's one of the things where, you know, it comes down to a lot of testing again and just grinding the mm-hmm. millstone for a long, long time. <laughs> so. Yeah. That, just remember me when you, you know, make those skins. Just remember that we want that Quicksilver looking skin. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew you were going to ask that. The, the, the legally... Uh... Yeah, legally, uh, <laughs> That's right, the white, white lightning and on the chest. I mean, they know about. Oh, I want to yeah. do this. <laughs> well, they, believe me, we sit around talking about all kinds of crazy <laughs> stuff. Like, um, I one of the things I want to do is, is, is you know, is I, I would love to get um, just some. If anybody out there wants to just have some fun and create special models. That we can just mess around with. I mean, I would love to to throw in ridiculous things like do a John Wick model, mm-hmm. do a Mandalorian model, just for the hell of it. Just to mm-hmm. you know, and not actually be able to release it or anything, but just have some fun, mm-hmm. you know. Because um, yeah, yeah I, I love <laughs> I love John Wick. It's completely unrealistic, but it's really. But that's the whole thing is the the power fantasy, you know. Like oh, that'd be cool. But I mean, honestly, yeah, honestly with that. With that mechanic, if you could grab one of those enemies and all that and throw it in, and I mean that would be awesome. This would be a different different game altogether. But yeah, it plays down to the power fantasy that you were talking about and all that. So I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, this is already a great game. I mean, 
you guys are 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 mixing some kind of concoction here, very dangerous to the public. <laughs> if I might say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I mean, uh, I, I mean, I'm already thinking of uh, of pre-ordering, but you guys haven't done that yet. It's just a wish list right now. So, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. So um, uh, I don't have Rainier. Do you have any ideas what to ask these guys? Because I mean, they have me stunned already. Um, no, I think uh, yeah, I was just interested <laughs> in how the multiplayer is gonna work, but yeah, I think that's still in your your pipeline, right? So anyway, we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes. When is it? When will the early access be? Um, right now, it looks like it's gonna be August seventh. Um, and okay. uh, I'm not sure exactly what time of day. Um, mm-hmm. we just okay. we just know that the. The date's going to be August seventh, so this keep an eye out. Eight, August seventh. Uh, that's that's uh, August seventh. U- yeah. U.S. Uh, U.S. time. Um, yeah. Um, but like I said, we're not sure if it's you know what hour. Uh, so what I would do, I would just say, hey, check back August seventh and August eighth. Um, yeah. it's okay. going into yeah early access on Steam. It's uh, it's completely free. So get in there. Um, you know, just uh search you know steam uh for chrono shot one word and uh yeah we'd love to see see you there and yeah well we're gonna link it man yeah. i mean we're gonna promote the hell out of this <laughs> yeah. i mean I, well, thank you i, I want to see because i mean i'm more than anything i want to be interested in who is gonna play this game not really um the numbers but who exactly in the group of gamers who's going to appreciate this type of game because like i said i mean i'm already excited so much with this is no joke because you guys are concocting some kind of dangerous formula here that uh, i might see first time particularly with the multiplayer i'm already excited and what you guys have in store for that so yeah um thank you very much guys for guesting in in our podcast and yeah good luck and um i hope you guys release soon I'm already excited. Awesome. Well, thank right. you, and and ho- hopefully we'll do another, uh, you know, another uh, podcast with you when we uh, when we release some really cool yes. stuff and talk about Please that. Please do. Please cool. do. We expect that. Thank you very much, Noah and Tony here uh, from uh, Quick Fire Labs, releasing Chrono Shot. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You have a great day. You too. Take care. All right. Yan po ang ating episode ngayon. Uh, thank you very much for listening and wag masyadong puro kalaro. You have a great day.